everyone. Um, <laughs> we weren't expecting this was going to happen, but uh, we're just doing, I know I said this previously, but of course I don't think anybody saw it. Um, we're just doing a quick test run here on uh, Things Network. Um, Nikki, who I have obviously, is uh, is giving it a shot with show hosting. And um, we actually were doing really good previously with the first take. We were just broadcasting it on my uh, personal page. But unfortunately, something went wrong with StreamYard, so we had to <laughs> we had to do a cancel. We had to cancel the first take, so now we're kind of doing a take two of it. And uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Jeremy just said now you're showing on live this time. Good, all right, good, good. That's all I need to know. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, thank, thank, thank you, you, Jeremy. Appreciate it. Good, good thing I sent this uh, to one of the chats because we we would have been in big trouble if we didn't know about that it was not showing anything. So, <laughs> but anyways, we're gonna make this a take two, and uh, we're just we're only just gonna be on for just a few minutes just to see how things will run. Again, we're not gonna make this like a a, a full show at least not yet. Again, this this essentially is just a test run that we're doing. So. Uh, but with that being said, um, Nikki, obviously, mm -hmm. since I know you got a few questions, I'm going to turn it over to you, and I'll be ready to answer any of the questions you have in mind. So whenever you're ready. Yeah, sure. Um, so, Nick, what is your first – so, Nick, what was your very first location that you investigated? So it's interesting. It's really a, a, a combination of two different locations because – where I first investigated, I investigated at quite a relatively young age, which at that time I was only 14 years old, but they were only part-time investigations. So these were like full night uh, investigations that we did. And it was, um, it was at a location. There, there was a couple of them, but I, one of my first biggest ones, I think was at a location called the uh, Hotel Colorado. It was located, ironically, in Colorado. It was in, I, I don't remember exactly which town, but it was, it was a place that gave me the chance to actually go to different areas and corridors of this hotel to investigate. And although I didn't get to experience anything as I was hoping so, it was it was a good start because even, at, even though I was only 14 years old, I already had some of the equipment that a lot of investigators use. I had it. I had a uh, digital recorder, pen, I even had a pendulum crystal, dowsing rods, laser thermometer. I mean, I was <laughs> I was already, you know, packed up and ready to go. Even though, uh, EM, I almost, in fact, I had one more other item, and I didn't say this on the previous one. I even had an EMF reader. So, you know, I was, I was already rising through the ranks at such a young age that even though a lot of the other types of tools that a lot of investigators use, which – were definitely a lot more expensive than what they are now. You know, that was quite remarkable for me to have that type of equipment at such a young age. So it really, so I think in some way it did have an effect on, you know, how I got started. But the real first like full bite investigation I ever did was a few years later when I was 17 years old. And I had the opportunity of investigating Waverly Hill Sanatorium, which that to me is certainly a location still to this day that doesn't disappoint. I still consider it as one of my all-time favorites. So, and and to me, with that investigation, I think it pretty much helped me of where I where I am today. Even though I started at twelve, that one that Waverly Hills investigation, which was back in two thousand ten, mm -hmm. was um was definitely I think you can kind of say my pretty much my official debut to become like a full full fledged paranormal investigator if that makes any sense. Awesome. Um, what is your favorite food for people that don't know? Favorite food, I would probably say, um, that's an interesting one too. <laughs> I would probably have to say uh, most likely, um, it would probably just have to be pizza, just something simple as that. Oh, uh, Howie's in the house. Hey, Howie or Ed. What's your uh, advice for people not to eat? That's kind hey, of a Holly, tough one. Huh? What's your <laughs> food that you recommend people not to eat? The only, the only thing I can no really no. Think of, the only thing I could probably think of not to eat during investigation. I mean, it's well before an investigation. I can only think of maybe some type of like anything involving chocolate or something because that makes you go to the bathroom quite a lot. 
<laughs> if you know what I mean. So that's, Been there, done that. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> you so, carry Make sure yeah. there's always a bathroom when you investigate. <laughs> um, could go wrong. Um, what's your advice for people that are just getting into the paranormal field? So that's that's a really good question to answer, uh, answer actually, because there's a couple different ideas I could think of when it comes to uh, to newcomers who are just getting started in this field. Um, first off, I would start off with, um, you know, try not to exact, you know, like it's fine if you want to watch some of the paranormal shows, but I would, but I would also say, you know, you don't need to be exactly, you know, like in a way to be like them. Like, in other words, you don't have to do the exact same thing that they do on the shows because sometimes what they do is not always the best. So, I mean, you know, it depends on that particular investigator, you know, who, who's uh, having the, you know, who's running the investigation. I would just simply say, you know, just be your personal self and just investigate the best you can. Um, another thing I would probably uh, throw out there too is, um, Definitely try not, and and again, I know some investigators do this, but I think a lot of us don't, including myself. I would definitely not provoke, especially if you're dealing with some kind of negative entity, because if you do that, you're definitely going to make things worse when it comes to uh, when it when it comes to like a negative entity or something. Because right. either you're going to get quite a, a very aggressive response, or you're not going to get anything at all. So that's that's another thing too. I would say try not to provoke, and you know honestly, I didn't say this in the test run. I actually had another thing to throw in, and Jeremy, who I know is backstage, he's going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I would probably also say, especially if you're investigating a um, a rather large location, like not just one room, like a huge building or whatever. Perhaps yeah. maybe for safety reasons, always have somebody with you because there's always those possibilities of getting lost in a certain area, especially if you're not familiar with that location. So that mm -hmm. would be, I would say that kind of more for the safety reasons. And and finally, the other thing I would definitely throw out, because I think it's just as important as for the newcomers that are trying to join this field, don't be surprised if you don't capture anything because, you know, when you go to these locations, you know, some of these newcomers are always under the impression, especially when they watch a lot of the shows or if they even watch some of the uh, classic haunted house horror films, that there's so much activity occurring, you know, as they show probably almost every five minutes when unfortunately either it's not at times genuine activity that could be explained or if it is yeah. and it looks like it's happening every few minutes, all that edited, all that footage is cut down. So it looks like almost everything's happening every five minutes, maybe actually five hours. Exactly. So it's not what I'm basically saying is not in any way, shape, or form to try to deter or to not have people try and do this. It's just the reality of how investigations are. And again, mm -hmm. every now and then we do have to do rather serious investigations, especially if you're at a residential property, because whoever lives in that house is mm -hmm. probably scared to death. So when we do those, we put the seriousness on. We don't. We don't joke around. But ever, but in other locations, it's sometimes fun to investigate. But whether it's a serious investigation or a fun investigation, the reality mm -hmm. is is that ninety percent of paranormal investigating is usually boring. You go to these places, you investigate them, you think you're going to have some type of experience, but unfortunately, for the most part, nothing happens. So it's again, it's not to turn people away. That's just that's just the way how it usually works. And as I said in the test run, the best way I could describe it, it very much is like uh, mm -hmm. it's like fishing, basically. You know, you have to sit and wait for a very yeah. long time before you get that catch. It's fishing in the paranormal field, essentially. That's probably the best way to describe it, because when we've done a lot of locations, we have to be there for 10 hours plus to get that five minute of footage. You're not always going to get activity straight away. And sometimes you don't get activity at all. You can go to the same location, get a lot of activity, but then the next time you go, it's flatline. There's nothing there. And sometimes spirits don't want to communicate. They're like us. Sometimes they've had a bad, you know, day or whatever night 
and they don't want to come and communicate and sometimes they do so and we yes, see respect yes it is you're absolutely right on that because that's the other thing too and it's not and again this is another thing for 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 those who are just getting started in it just because you hear of a particular location that um oh and actually i just see a comment here hang on one second here ed said hey nick while we're here and you're you were doing this what's your opinion about spirits dimensional beings and aliens and do you feel there is a good possibility that a good portion of what we're dealing with which is not nearly spirits but dimensional beings um, we can come back to that in a sec because I was going to say that could be an, a question maybe you and I can both answer. Um, but what yeah, I will sure. just, say, but what I, I I will say real quick, um, and don't worry. Eventually, we'll 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 figure out how you could uh, if you want to take care of the questions. That's totally fine. Um, yeah. Yeah. What I'm just going to say is uh, just because also you hear of a particular haunted location that is said to be full of activity, and I can actually throw another example out we didn't say this in the test run but yeah about over a decade ago we had the opportunity of investigating that oh, excuse me not batchers uh bobby mackey's music world also in kentucky but it, but in the town of uh in the town of wilder oh, wow. and that was for years that was the place that you know that was where that famous you know then that, that possession occurred um uh where where carl was possessed they had the exorcism that occurred yeah you know, they, they they said it was supposed to be a very active, you know, people were getting attacked, people were getting scratched. And when we had, and we were given all those warnings, you know, saying, you know, you're probably going to come across as much as I don't like to say it now, you're going to come across demons. They're, they're going to screw with your head, that kind yeah. of thing. But unfortunately, um, during the investigation that we went, that when we went over there, long and behold, there was no, uh, there, there was almost nothing that occurred at Bobby Mackey's. The only thing that actually that that we couldn't explain that occurred was well, first off, we went during the middle of August. This was back in August of 2012, and you think of a month like August. Unfortunately, we probably ch- could have chose one of the worst times to really be there. It was humid and it was hot, and there was no air conditioning in that. Day. So it was like it just it was just burning us alive the only type, the only type of activity that occurred the entire night yeah. because of the intense heat that was happening was um was just an unexplained cool breeze that went by us like we didn't know where this breeze came from like i said there was no air conditioning running that night so there was no mm-hmm. we we couldn't understand that but literally after that nothing else happened that night that was the only type of paranormal activity that occurred at Bobby Mackey's and you know some people were saying that this place is a dud it wasn't you know what we thought it was going to be but but I thought so you know again because I was still kind of learning this myself I kind of thought the same thing too but eventually I came to that realization that you know we just probably came at, at, at a wrong time because you'll have a location out there that and this is my advice you may have a famous location where you may go one night and there's going to be a lot of activity occurring, but then once you go a different night Correct. and there's like almost nothing. So that's the other thing. You know, we always hear that, you know, you hear the old thing of expect the unexpected. That's not just necessarily for the paranormal like activity itself. Expect, I think expect the unexpected would be like, don't be surprised if nothing happens that night. So just be prepared for anything. Yeah, exactly. That's what happened with us. When we went to a location, it was crazy the first night. And then the second time we went there, it was flat. And we're just like, okay, they don't want to come forward. That's fine. We're not going to force them to. And then the next time we went, they stopped non-stop talking. So we're like, okay, guys, you can stop now. It's bedtime. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was good night. We were actually, I was talking about that with a recent, uh, with another show. It was just on uh, yesterday. And we kind of were thinking to ourselves, thinking maybe these spirits, like on the other side, maybe they have a schedule of their own, like of what they may have had mm-hmm. in life. So, you know, you, like, for example, if it's like, uh, um, I, I forgot what, I forgot which, uh, which place they were talking about, but it, it involved like, like either people working a very important job they may have had in life. And this was, again, mm-hmm. probably, and this location that they were talking about, 
it's quite a very active area. I, I know it was somewhere in Scotland. And um, they've gone a few times where, again, sometimes they had the activity occurring and there were others that weren't. And they started speculating, thinking, well, the people that worked in this building may have most likely – you know, I guess we're not we're not doing their activity that day because probably in their world, in some way, mm-hmm. it was probably they were probably going about their work schedule as they did in life. So perhaps maybe they have some kind of work schedule, and that's why sometimes we don't get we don't always get the activity in some of these locations. Exactly, and I think also too, like people that have just started, be prepared to wait because it is a waiting game. As Nick said, it's like going fishing; you may catch stuff, sometimes you may not. And also be respectful. Big respect thing is for me and my team. Don't provoke. Um, we don't use Ouija boards because you never know who you may contact. If you do, make sure you close it. Um, so, yeah. So let's see that question that um, that Ed gave. So, let's see, I'm just going to look at it again. It's... Yeah, I do think that maybe there's a possibility that you know, everything that we've been dealing with is not necessarily always spirits. I think Mm -hmm. there definitely are certainly types of different dimensional beings out there. I know for a fact last year when I investigated the Abbey, what I encountered that, that night is, which I I think I told you a while back about that creature Mm -hmm. that, that I dealt with. I honestly, Mm -hmm. despite that it had that appearance, like some people would say immediately, if you give that description, it says it, you know, some would say, "Oh, that sounds like a demon." You know, like with all those lo- with those long claws and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I honestly don't think the least bit that it was demonic. It, it may have had, it may have had that sort of demonic look to it. But also, uh, I think too, when it comes to interdimensional beings, especially uh-huh. if they're not human, just because just because there's a just because that entity is a non-human entity, that right. doesn't always mean that there's a demon. I, it's a demon. I honestly think there's actually, and yeah. I know it may may seem a little cliche in some way. No, no but, I get it. But I think there's other, I guess, spe- if you want to say species or races of different types of entities out there that you can identify with. But mm-hmm. unfortunately, I think we're everybody's too focused on, on the demons when I think there's yeah. really quite a variety of other types of entities out there. So I think in some way it could be like interdimensional beings. Yeah, I say exactly what Nick just said. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I believe that, you know, um, don't always assume everything is demonic because majority of the time it's not. Um, It's just that that's the way they were in life. Um, You know, they may have had a tragic, the way they've passed, they may have had like a tragic death. So then they're going to be a little bit peed. Um, but then when you get to know them, they kind of relax because, yeah, I've had to deal with that at a location and they're kind of like, well, hey, actually, these people are pretty cool. Um, and also with um, you never know, they might be guides. Um, like, you know, if you go to a forest, talk about like Indians, you know, um, they may be like, hey, why is this person walking on my land? So therefore I'm going to transform into protective mode. So, yeah, you never know. You don't. You really don't. He also said, we also don't know when we are encountering a time split or cut in the time continuum when we're in the field. Mm -hmm. It's a really good way of putting it. Yeah, he's definitely impressed by this. Yeah, it's it's a very fascinating feel when it comes to, you know, like certain entities or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I I think it does have an effect, you know, on, on certain individuals because, you know, and also like, and this goes back to what we were just saying about like, um, when it comes to don't be surprised. I think also another important piece of advice would be, you know, don't be disappointed if you didn't capture anything, because right. there's a very likely chance you're not going to be able to capture anything, whether it's sound or photograph or video. Ninety five percent of the time, you really don't capture anything, and if you did capture something. Most of the time, it can be debunked, but if you captured something that you definitely can't explain, even if it's something brief, that can sometimes be the holy grail of what you captured. Because, and, and I said this in the test run, five years ago, I used to actually help out with the Chicago Ghost Tours. We had an invest, uh, We it, this was back when they were ran by an investigator by the name of Ursula Bielski, who we've actually had as a guest on one of our shows. She's kind of been described as like um, the queen of paranormal Chicago. Um, she's also a very good friend of mine. 
And I was mm -hmm. fortunate enough to actually help out with one of her tours. Now, for the most part, the tour was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, we all had a great time on it. But just like as I expected, when we went to these different haunted locations, we had little to no activity, which, you know, you have to remember, too, it was kind of like a public investigation, too, which I'm not always too crazy about public investigations, like unless it's a relatively small group of people or those right. that actually want to learn or if they're investigators that I, I know personally, you, you just don't get as much re results when you're on the mm -hmm. public investigations. So. So, uh, but yeah, we, we went to this one location, which was like kind of, it was far off. It was, we were like, this was like, well, probably about a good 50 miles away, at least from Chicago. So we were kind of out in the, in the rural areas and we were going to this area that supposedly there was a hanging tree. This was kind mm -hmm. of in a grass, kind of in a grassland field, kind of forest area. And supposedly parts of the remains of parts of the noose were still there. So we, we get off the bus and we're walking back. We're walking through this pathway. Now, the, keep in mind, most of the, the tour was during the day. We didn't really, they, we couldn't obviously do it at night, unfortunately, as much as some people would want it, would have wanted to. But we're walking over to this, uh, to this area. And I, I still, you know, it still bothers me to this day. There were these people that were walking behind us and, you know, it's like they didn't seem like they had any trouble whatsoever. If people heard them or not. They're like saying they, they were saying something like, uh, geez, look at this. You know, we spent we spent all this money on this tour. We've not experienced anything like we paid like, what, 50 or 60 dollars for this or something like that. And mm -hmm. it, it just bothered me so much that all I just wanted to do was just turn. I just wanted to turn around saying, look, you need to understand this is not you're not going to. There's no guarantee that you're going to have some type of experience when it. Right. If you do great, if not, I mean that's what happens most of the time. Therefore, if you're not satisfied with how things are going, you might as well just wait on the bus until we're done. But of course, like I, I know I said this on the on, on the test run, but um, yeah. uh, but obviously, I really wanted to, but. I didn't want to cause a scene, obviously, you know, because yeah. everybody else was maybe, maybe was probably having a great time. I didn't want to just leave a, a strange vibe after that. So I just kept to myself as a result of that. So, but that's just something I would probably give out, you know, for a lot of those that are, that are just getting started in it. I like that idea. Sounds good. Yeah. Best advice I can give you, just be respectful and like take your time and relax and have fun, but also put your guards up and treat everyone and the paranormal field with respect as well. That's a big thing. Um, so, yeah, if you have any other questions, Nick, for me, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could ask you real uh, I could ask you, uh, again, I think this was our last question that we had, but um, yep. what, what got you into the paranormal field? Um, so when I was much younger, I had a family member that had passed away, and I was actually the last living person to see this person. Um, and as I got older, I would constantly feel the energy around me and constantly see them. And I remember my mum going like, oh, who are you talking to? And I'm like, granddad's standing behind me. Mum's like, what? Um, and I just wanted to create a safe place where people can come and talk about the paranormal field and not be scared to. Um, and then I found lovely Nick um, and, yeah, pretty much helped. Um, yeah, just... Pretty much just wanted to create a place where people feel safe and also um, just be yourself. And, yeah, probably that would probably be what got me into the paranormal field, just wanting to know what is after when we pass. And I always tell people it's never goodbye. It's always until we meet again. Um, so, yeah just that classic example like a lot of people would say this is not goodbye just see you later exactly and when i come back nick if you see cat balls being lit up that's me or cat balls missing. <laughs> you know just to throw something out because i honestly truly believe this is you know as someone who is also you know a big supporter as you can see in my background of that term para unity i know i know of course there's many other investigators that unfortunately they, they don't believe it or at the very least they see it as as para family which i'm also a supporter mm -hmm. of too 
I honestly think that a lot of our investigators, you know, because obviously even as investigators ourselves, we're all going to die eventually, you know, sometime in our future. And I think every now and then some of the investigators who have passed have kind of visited us every now and then, because you, you probably have seen me do it several times, but whenever an investigator passes away, you know, I take it personally. And then I let the rest of our community know that, you know, whether, whether, you know, whether or not we knew that investigator or whether or not we seen them in person or not, um, Mm -hmm. or not, um, I always think it's a good way to dedicate and in a way, uh, you know, honor that investigator to be kind of surrounded by all of our fellow living investigator fa- paranormal family members. And I always, I use a typical song for it because I, I saw it once being used in a funeral video. Video I used the song uh, Nothing Else Matters by Metallica, which does kind of have that kind of gloomy mm-hmm. kind of atmosphere to it. It's, it's one of my yeah. favorite songs by them too. And, I love it. Uh, yeah. And to me that the song makes a lot of sense because we're all taking a moment to remember that investigator who's passed because it's like for a few minutes, nothing else matters, but to give the ultimate respect, it's, it's no different. It's it's probably almost as close. It's probably almost similar. Like, you know, when uh, you have a soldier or a police officer, you know, die in battle or a police officer, you know, killed on the job and all his, you know, his or her fellow soldiers or investigators, they, or you know, officers, they all come together to spend those last couple moments before they bury that person, you know, to remember them as the person that they were, that this was one of them. And also to kind of give that reminder that, you know, one that unfortunately that, you know, sadly it's going to go like, we're all going to be eventually in the same position ourselves. Exactly. And I always say, I, I always write this at the very last, I always make this the very last sentence for this mm-hmm. investigator. Cause we always, again, I've said it a lot. You probably have said it. This is something that we're all too familiar with is that, you know, when it comes to uh, being in this field, yes, we're always trying to gather all this evidence, but there's just some things out there that we're probably not going to know until our time has come. So as a, so as a result of that, I I often will say for the investigator who's passed the last sentence, I always say, now you can find all the answers we've been looking for. Yeah. You good? (laughs) Yep. Just for God's stuck. (laughs) But yeah, (laughs) as I said, yeah, just love one, just love one another, and be respectful. Um, Also, just a quick little rant. Um, So on Paranormal Perth page, um, we will never expect um, trolling disrespect towards paranormal investigators um, through networks, channels, Facebook, anything like that. Just always show love and be respectful because respect is a big thing for me. Um, if you're going to be disrespectful, then please unfollow or nicely leave um, because yeah, yeah, was, respect is a big thing for us. So. We unfortunately had one of those uh, trolls on yeah, Supernatural Talk earlier today. So yeah. you probably saw that. And that, that, was just, <laughs> that was just nasty. So, but yeah, it's always good to to give that reminder and yeah, I mean, and not just in this case, you know, for what could be your potential show. I mean, this for us as a whole, especially on things network, we definitely have a zero tolerance for, for those that, that troll us or say anything, not only just Mm -hmm. disrespectful, but also highly inappropriate because that that's definitely something that should never be shown. Like, you know, those are either, those are, I mean, I either assume, yes, some of them are probably just, bots as they call them you know it's just a mechanical yeah. thing mm-hmm. but for those that are just looking for trouble they're obviously looking for the wrong pages to to cause that kind of thing so that's just uh that's just something that's just not going to be tolerated so nicely keep left so yeah as oh we even have the things network a little yeah, I, I just realized I, yeah i just realized i forgot to i forgot to post that up so i just thought Thanks, I'd put, I'd put it up in the corner um, also, I just want to do a quick shout out to um, a lot of our supporters, as such as Nick. Um, thank you for supporting my journey creating Paranormal Perth. Um, Paranormal Perth has only been running for the past two and a half years. Um, yeah, just thank you for your massive support. Jeremy York, thank you for your support as well. Our viewers, our sponsors, thank you. Also, a big shout out to our locations. Thank you, guys. Also, my team. Um, it wouldn't be pretty much happening if it wasn't for you. 
Um, and also a shout out to our follow. So I'm just reading some of the comments. Um, also, yeah, just a shout know, out to. I, I, could, I could share them out for you. So you yeah, thank you. Also, just a big video. shout out to you. Thank you to all the networks. So, Things Network, Paralinks Network, Paracult over here in Australia, Afterlife Party. Please check out their YouTube chat page and also Paracult YouTube page. Oh, that's a bit tongue tied. Also, we have created a paranormal um, YouTube page. So, it's Paranormal Perth at West Australia because I do realize there's actually other places around the world called Perth. Um, as, as I said before, everyone is welcome to join my page because at the end of the day, I just wanted to create a safe place where people can come and connect. And at the end of the day, we are a family and we treat everyone with dignity and respect. And if you're not going to be like that, then nicely exit. Um, so, yeah, that's my little rant. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what Ed even said, Saint. This is a huge family you're coming into. We got each other's backs. And he also made a good point, too. Then you have those of us out there that are from different networks and different places that will show up at other shows, and then they have your back. And that's – and I I, I, did, I said this in the test run, but I didn't get to have the chance to really say in this case for the this slide. But it's amazing of how far we've really grown in this in this paranormal field. Like, you know, it's mm – -hmm. um, you know, world – you know, we become – worldwide you know like for the longest time it seemed like the majority of investigators were just usually either throughout north america and europe but now mm -hmm. we've kind of expanded pretty much to almost everywhere i mean i i could go on all night basically about it i mean i could just or just to say it in a simple you know way you know instead of going about it all night obviously you know not just only you but there's several investigators now obviously within australia you know they're throughout europe you know, parts of Africa now have them, and they're, they're obviously you have plenty of us throughout North America, but they're also in Central and South America. I mean, they're they're mm -hmm. in Asia, right. and also like mm -hmm. I said, and of course, you know, you even have investigators as far not necessarily a continent, at least not yet, but you know, yeah. you have also investigators in New Zealand too. Right. So you know, they're we're we're all over the place. Mm -hmm. So wow, she said, "Sorry, I'm reading that last comment." Yeah, well, I'll put it up for you. you know. To that a whole lot nice nicer than i would have <laughs> as i said i'm respectful so yeah see, no, I'm holding actually, back. <laughs> see we've actually had ed as a guest on a while back on supernatural oh, cool. so if you're ever looking for more guests i would i would highly recommend him he's a really he's a really good guy and he yeah. and here and he runs a paranormal network of his own too called the rift network Oh, awesome. Cool. Definitely love to have you come and have a chat and, yeah, socialize with us as well. And I'm pretty sure, as Nick said, Things Network and also Paranormal Perth. Well, it's yeah. Kind of oh, we do have our yeah, be, yeah, you're you're doing, I was going to say, you're doing pretty good, I got to admit. I learn, I learn it from everybody. Like, I take little bits from people and, um, yeah, also a shout out to Tom's World. Sorry, that had to yeah, be brought up. Or as we they usually say, up. yeah, go. Make sure to go to youtube.com slash this is Tom's world. No apostrophe, all one word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep, here you go. Saying, yep, feel free to send me a friend request. Will do, my friend. Um, but yeah, I'll quickly show you what our face. Also, um, we have just made. Um, hang on, I'm just checking it. My Facebook page. So we currently have um, 2,100 and. 2,182 followers, so a big shout to you guys. It's not about followers. It's just about creating a page where people can come and connect and talk about the paranormal, but thank you guys. So, and it's yeah, from everyone around the world. Of, I say a lot of times, you know, like whether it's regards to viewers or, you know, you know what, whatever the case, or just support for the page. I mean, mm -hmm. I always don't – yes, it's always good to have a lot of the viewers and also a lot of supporters, yeah. but, you know, um, in the end – it's one of those things I think it's not about quantity. It's about quality because exactly. as long as, as long as you enjoy doing what you like doing, that's mm -hmm. all that matters, you know, cause I've, cause there've been a few times where I've done some shows where we don't, we didn't have any viewers at all, right. including my show, but mm -hmm. that didn't stop me. I still did it anyway. Cause I thought to myself, you know what? And I, and I've never done this, you know, yeah. I, I've never stopped. If no one was watching, I'm thinking to myself, you know what? No one's watching, but I'm still going to watch it anyway because I'm still going to do the show anyway because I like what I'm doing. 
I'm still exactly. blasting, you know, information. And most importantly, too, even if nobody's watching, that mm-hmm. doesn't mean that somebody could watch a replay later on. So exactly. I think in some way it definitely has, an, you know, it has a pro again. It there's there's definitely something that wants to keep you going when when you're doing a podcast. So that's exactly. why I still continue, even if I don't have viewers watching. Exactly. It's not about, as you said, it's not about how many people you have. It's yeah, what you have. It so really. Is. Yeah, that's the one. But yeah, uh, all righty, guys. I think we're gonna head off because um, we said we were going to be here for five minutes. We've been here for 35, so time flies <laughs> when you're having fun. And I'm pretty sure Nick would like to go to bed and you guys back home in the U.S. would like to go back to bed because I believe it's past. Oh, geez, Greg just show- hey, Greg hey! just showed up. Unfortunately, we're just about to end, un- uh, unfortunately. Sorry, so this was kind of a test run. But, yeah, I got to say, I mean, although I was kind of the one doing answering more, well, answering the questions, I got to say, this was definitely a good show for you, Nikki. Thank you. Yeah, I thought yeah. I'll just give it a go and see how I go. Because I believe it or not, I actually get really nervous. You know, like I, I said this before, but, but you know, like whenever yeah. you're doing a first time podcast, and, and I and I'll be honest, it was the same thing for me when I first started Nick Files. Was that it was um, I was nervous myself, even though I was already doing other shows, but because Nick Files was the first show ever that I was really truly on my own because mm-hmm. there was there was no co there's no co-host there's uh yeah. there were no guests on the show you know my show mm-hmm. was certainly and still is different from all the other podcasts because as far as i know no other paranormal podcast um has ever done a show what i've done with with the uh the slideshows so you know, it, I mean, to this day, I, I have yet to have come across another podcast for what I do, so for like who does the same thing that I do. So mm-hmm. therefore, because I was completely on my own, I was definitely nervous about it. But afterwards, I mean, after a few minutes, I was able to kind of get the hang of it. Yes, yeah. it was a little bit challenging. But then afterwards, um, the shows that, that followed, I was completely fine then. So I, as I said before, it was uh, it's it's basically a first time sort of thing. So. Other than that, it's not a big issue at that point. To me, I think it's just the first one. So yeah. that's so you. for you, you should be able to probably get a, a, a better hang of it for future shows. Thank you for yeah doing this. Um, we actually didn't plan this. I pretty much caught up Nick, and I'm like, hey, do you want to do a five minute show? He's like, yeah, no worries, help. So yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. Like for, yeah, especially I mean the fact also since I've known you for quite a long time now. And that yeah. you've been trying to, you know, you have been trying to start a show of your own. Obviously, I know it was going to be a little bit of a challenge for you, but that's why. And, and I would do this really for anybody, you know, who wants to try to start podcasts. And, um, you know, especially with the experience I've had. And obviously, I was willing to help, of course. So I'm glad I'm glad you reached out. I'm glad I was able to be a good help for you. Thank you. Really appreciate all the help and support that you've done in the past. God, six years plus. Yeah. It's been a while. It has been. I knew it's him with you with a little clipper. I knew when he was <laughs> It definitely was my absolute pleasure, though. So so thanks for reaching out, Nikki. I really appreciate it. No worries. Well, I think we're going to head off because, as I said, I think a few of us need some sleep. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's already past 11. Again. It's already um, past 11 o'clock over here. <laughs> And please follow Things Network, and I'm pretty sure they'll have a show tomorrow because I believe tomorrow's Friday because we're 24 hours in front. So please yeah. have a look at their page and support them as much as they support us. And a shout-out to you guys, and take care and have a great night. All right. Good night, everyone.